Hello, I'm Gavin Clark, and I'm here with the National Museum of Computing at Blashley Park, which has the largest collection of working historical computers anywhere. We've been taking your questions uh, via Twitter, putting them to our uh, expert volunteers in the museum, who of course are guides and work on the rebuilds at the museum. Um, one we've had in from William Sutter at Mr. T Tree Frog, apparently. Um, he's asked us, uh, this, this comes up quite a lot, it touches on quite an interesting subject, it's about Colossus. Um, I'd be fascinated to see a functional block diagram of Colossus. Sadly, there isn't a deposit of technical information available to the public. Well, I'm here with Peter Hove and uh, Roger Johnson, who work, uh, that work at the museum, who uh, know a little bit about this. Guys, well, there isn't a lot of technical information out there about Colossus, which of course is the, uh, one of the most famous uh, crypto code breaking machines used at Bletchley Park during the Second World War. Um, where, where is William going to see uh, a block diagram of this fantastic machine? And why isn't there so much technical information available? Okay, well, you can see a block diagram, as, which, which was the subject of the original question, um, on Tony Sales Codes and Ciphers .org, um, website. Mm -hmm. It's pretty basic, and I think there'll probably be an overlay on this uh, on this presentation, so you can have a look at it. Mm -hmm. it's, <clears throat> it shows you that basically the um, the really basic architecture of, of Colossus is quite simple. Mm. It generates a key stream electronically or a putative key stream electronically, compares that with the cipher tape, and you see always in the block diagram, um, and it's computing a lot of exclusive or arithmetic, which is driven by Bill Tut's algorithm. It's a very simple looking algorithm, deceptively simple actually, but hard to execute fast. Mm. Um, and it's doing that on a continuous basis and basically it's counting. It's essentially, not to be too pejorative, it's a big counting machine, mm. um, but with a little bit of intelligence behind, a little bit of, um, of, of, of cleverness that's embedded in the software. What you won't see on the block diagram is how it's programmed. Mm. Um, you've got to really come to the museum to see that. You'll see the plug board and the, uh, the patch panels and the switches that are used to program, or rather to alter its behavior um, it's a subtle form of programming um, mm. really the core the core behind it the way it works is, is embedded in the hardware that's the algorithm itself the so-called mm. double delta algorithm um, the output is 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 on on, on a printer and, the, and that's giving you an indication as to possible settings on the, mm. the Lorentz machine which is really what we're trying to find using yeah. um, it, it is um, it's not modern day um, architecture compliant. It's not von Neumann compliant in any way, shape or form, although it does have the basic components. The input is the cipher tape, the output is a printout of sorts, but uh, between those two, the ends of the process is completely different to modern day architecture. Where would, um, to obviously we, we've agreed this is a diagram by Tony who masterminded the rebuild of Colossus at, at the museum. Um, mm. Where would Tony have, got his inspiration from to, to sketch this out. Was he working from an original diagram or an actual diagram or was he just piecing it together in his own right. kind of head from different sources? Yeah, during the time that Tony and the team were working on it, they would have had access to, um, at least to a limited extent, to Tom Flowers in particular, mm. um, who, who was still around at the time and, uh, and other, pe other people who had worked on the project. So he would be able to put together the, the basic um, uh, block basic principles behind the way it works and yeah. you derive that block diagram. There were fragments of circuit diagrams that are available and they're on display in the Colossus Gallery at the museum. Um, only a few and this is because, oh, and I like to say this is because you can't tell an engineer to chuck anything away. You want to, you want to <laughs> see my love. I must be an engineer, um, there. go on, yes. Precisely, well you are, Every, everybody's one to an extent I guess. But, yeah. Um, so the, these were squirreled away. I guess people had pride in their work, pride in a little bit of circuitry they created because may have been innovative in some way. Yeah. Um, so that, that, that's that's a good thing, really, and works slightly against the rules yeah. of the extent at the time. Yeah. Um, so that it, it's, it's as much a detective job as anything else is recreating these things, yeah. and, and and it's all down to persistence, perseverance. And heroism, really, when you look at the, the efforts that the team went to over a period of 14 years to get it from, mm. you know, chalk marks on the ground to what you can now see in full functioning order in the museum. It's a remarkable achievement. Um, so let's come back to the second half of this question, which I think is interesting. 
Um, there isn't a large deposit of technical information available to the public. Uh, we can speculate as to why that isn't available, whether it even existed in the first place. But that didn't seem to stop the post-war development of the British computer industry, did it? Even though these manuals and these documents didn't seem to exist and Bletchley Park was under a heavy blanket of secrecy with the Official Secrets Act, did it? Can, can you explain what actually happened? How come we had a, a functioning post-war computer industry, even though this documentation might not have existed or might not have been uh, able to be used outside Bletchley Park? Now, when I'm guiding tours around Colossus, um, that's a frequently asked question, is didn't the secrecy surrounding this stymie the, the possible development of the UK, particularly the UK computer industry? Um, and the way I usually phrase it is not necessarily, because what you can't do is use the old pen trick that you saw in Men in Black and erase people's memories. They've worked yeah. on these devices over years um, during their, their, their um, time at Bletchley, and you're not going to simply erase that. They've, they've, they've gleaned all sorts of technical information. Um, they may have even developed uh, or improved on it. And so you can't erase that. That will be taken away into uh, the post-war situation. I was going to add two, two comments. Um, firstly, uh, remember that both uh, the Manchester and Cambridge computers, mm. the leaders of both of those teams, uh, Morris Wilkes at Cambridge, yeah. uh, Freddie Williams and Tom Kilburn at Manchester, had all been involved in, in, in different ways with radar during the war. And that also uses various forms of counting technologies mm. uh, I implemented using electronics. So uh, we, we need to realize that, that there are a number of technologies underpinning uh, the early computers. And although Colossus is one strand, there were other inputs too. Mm -hmm. the, the other comment about secrecy after the war, clearly the whole of the documentation about Colossus was absolutely secret because mm. two of the machines went off, as is now, I think, well known, to Cheltenham mm. with, with, well, went to, with GCHQ after the war and uh, were continued to be used on uh, Cold War uh, ciphers, mm. uh, hence the need for secrecy. Um, mm -hmm. That's why the, 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 there's little documentation. Um, mm -hmm. But the human capital, the intellectual property, travelled, uh, as you, Gavin, were saying, it travelled in people's heads. And yeah. uh, these people then turned up immediately after the war, uh, both back in their universities and uh, in, the electron in, in the electrical electronics industry uh, and the post office and so on. And... Uh, they then used that expertise quite freely. There's a mm -hmm. well-known uh, example, in, I think in about 1948, uh, there was a very heated discussion going on about whether a computer, an electronic computer, could be built using hundreds of valves. Valves have relatively short times between failure, yeah. and therefore the view was it, the machine simply won't work. It will not be able to run for long enough without a valve uh, blowing and having the machine stopping. And Jack Good is in the printed proceedings of a public conference standing up and say, Jack Good, sorry, worked uh, with Colossus. Jack Good stood up at a conference when this issue about valves was being discussed and simply is in the public record as saying, in my wartime experience, um, uh, devices using large numbers of valves are feasible and reliable, mm -hmm. provided the valves are not turned off. Mm -hmm. um, and probably the one or two people in the room who had been with him at Bletchley Park knew that Jack Good was talking about his experience with Colossus. Most of the other people um, would simply have assumed he'd been working on electronics during the war. Uh, and there was also, it's worth saying, a culture um, of not revealing, or rather not asking people um, exactly what they did in the war, Daddy. Uh, mm -hmm. You uh, didn't ask in order to avoid embarrassment. And in some cases, you wouldn't have been wished to be asked yourself what you'd been doing in the war. Yeah. So I think people had a, a degree of reservation at that time about not asking. But the information, the, the intellectual property, was 
freely circulating in the public mm. domain about the technology. It was, it was circulating with the people rather than in printed materials. Um, no, well, fairly soon, those who went back to university were writing papers about computers, and mm. what they were not doing was saying the advice, my, oh, Jack Good's example, he said my wartime experience and that's yeah. the sort of way they would couch it and uh, they would not uh, reveal what it was uh, where they got the experience okay. uh, but the experience was put into the written record mm. uh, but not where it was obtained great well there you have it i hope that answers your question uh, there isn't a whole lot of technical information to be happy it does exist you just have to find it and you have to follow the people